One of the meteorites we found this year we think might be from the moon. And if that's the case, it's the biggest lunar meteorite ever found in Australia. Science is all about discovery. And you're often sharing that discovery with somebody else. If you're collaborating with people, it's, uh, you can be talking about how this might be and then you go and do some experiments and, or whatever. And you figure out something and it's, it's that discovery that makes it really, really exciting. We used to go camping on the coast, so there's some creeks down there. We pan gold in the creek and, I don't know, when you're a little kid you always have this thing in your head, the next thing you dig up could be this giant gold nugget, right? So that's probably the thing that tweaked my interest right at the start and then I just kept being interested in it after that. Meteorites are one of the most exciting things to be researching because they're all about that discovery. They're, uh, they're rocks from space, right? So. Um, you're discovering things that are off the earth. You can discover things about Mars, you can discover things about the moon, or you can discover things about the very first bodies that were forming 4.5 billion years ago, right when the solar system was just kicking off its life. On the third year mapping camp here, I went for a walk one morning looking for meteorites. You can find them more easily in deserts. And I walked for about an hour and then spotted this rock that was mostly buried in the dirt. Thought it looked a bit unusual, so I went over and picked it up and yes, it's this meteorite that's about this big. It's about the size of a football, right? So that was buried in the, in the soil like that. You can see it was buried in the soil. And I went back and showed a mate of mine who, was, who actually works on meteorites and he was super excited. He just about wet himself. So um, I, at the time I didn't know how lucky a find it was. It's um, still the biggest meteorite we've found in something like seven years of looking for these things. So this one, it's got a lot of little green minerals in there called olivine. And so that one comes from the, the core mantle boundary of, a, of an asteroid that probably would have been 100 kilometres or more across. And then again, it's been broken up by a big impact early in the solar system and ended up on Earth. So this is one of the rocks from uh, the volcanoes in Victoria, just uh, would have formed about 6,000 years ago. So I'm just gonna cut it open and see if we can find an olivine bomb in it. Have a look. Not a bad one, actually. I'm gonna try to break this rock open and hopefully it'll work. You can get an estimate of the percentage of minerals in the, in the mantle by looking at this sort of stuff, right? That's how we know the composition of the mantle. So in northwestern Australia, there's the Pilbara region, and that has some of the world's oldest rocks. And some of the rocks we collected from there were 3.5 billion years old. And one of my honours students has been crushing those rocks up to look through them for micrometeorites that fell that long ago when those sediments were being laid down. So you've got, yes. you've got fragments in there that look like they've got micrometeorites in them. Yep. That one. Oh, that one's, that's got to be one, hey? That one, it's, that one, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's pretty big. Is that one of the bigger ones you found? Um. Her micrometeorites are of a really small size compared to what we normally find. And we think that tells us about the density of the early Archean atmosphere. And so if we can say that, that'll be a, like a whole new discovery about what the Earth looked like, you know, 2.7 billion years ago. So that sort of question would be really cool to answer.